thanks so much. Uh, 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 you know, this is a very special occasion for me because I have two of my favorite people um, uh, together. Um, I've been having discussions with Robin Walker for quite a while, who is is my my history guru, shall we say, <laughs> who 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 has that famous uh, book When We Rule, which has so much in it and has been educating me about African uh, uh, history along the way. And, and then there is, um, you know, uh, a Joyce uh, a King who I've known for many years. We won't say how many, Joyce, just to um, <laughs> protect our, our secret. Um, it's our black secret. <laughs> but Dr. King is president and CEO of the Academy of that, that for Literacy. And she's the Benjamin E. Mays um, Endowed um, uh, Chair and, and Professor at Georgia State uh, University. You might want to elaborate a little bit on that as we go down the road, um, uh, Joyce, um, because you know you have other accomplishments and other things that that you're doing. Um, I kind of set this this program up because you've been doing history, and um, and 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 history has to be taught, <laughs> you know. And and in doing the history, uh, kind of Robin has been teaching me and our audience. But I think we need a, a, a teacher, an educator to, to, to help us because, you know, the problem of the 21st century, our problem as a people is that, you know, we've been miseducated. As you know, we can go back to Carter G. Woodson and, 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 and um, you know, he can tell us about the, when back in the, in the 20s, he told us about the miseducation of, of African people. And, you know, I just want to throw in a little quote of my dad. He says, education is the medium by which a people are prepared for the creation of their own particular civilization and the advancement and glory of their own people. Now, if our curricula, et cetera, are being taught by um, others, shall we say, especially those others who have enslaved us and colonized us and brutalized us over time, then you know basically we we have no no foundation for for an independent constructive uh, uh, life and and this is the, the problem i think that we face um, in the 21st century this is the problem you know that we face in in trying to unite come together to throw off you, you know the impositions of of colonialism uh, etc is that we have not created an educational process i would say anywhere <laughs> not in the Caribbean, not in Africa, and not in the United States of America, that is independent of the influence of um, 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 colonial masters, if you will, and the whole the European perspective, which is um, a caricature of what really history ought to be, because certainly, um, you know, history didn't start with the Greeks. Um, um, and Robin and I have been through this. There were thousands of years of civilization in Africa before the Greeks came to Africa to learn. So at, neither did education, you know, uh, uh, start um, 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 in Europe. And, and I contend also that the, the educational process of, 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 of Europeans is, is, is largely a, a, about memorizing information. And, and it's not really about what education means. And, you know, I, uh, I, I don't want to monopolize the time. Well, I don't want to kind of set the stage. Education comes from ex ducere in terms of the Latin, leading out of. What are you leading out of? Well, what you're leading out of is, is, is the essence of what it means to be a human being. And that's what the purpose of education is supposed to be as opposed to stuffing people with facts which are factoids, which may be right, which may be wrong, which change over time. And uh, so um, we, we need a, um, an educational process that validates us historically and also is a true educational process that brings the best out of us, of who we are as, as, as human beings. Um, uh, I'm going to ask Robin to jump in there first um, because we have been on the road together. And 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 um and and Joyce um you know uh free, feel free to jump in any time, Robin. Yes, sir. Um, I have a slightly different perspective mm -hmm. because 
Um, my first exposure to this information came from the fact that I was part of a Saturday school in London where we were making use of the Portland model baseline essays. And we were doing this in the beginning of the 1990s. Now, the Portland model baseline essays were done by African-American intellectuals. And what they did was to come with content that could be used to revolutionize history teaching, uh, social science teaching, uh, history, excuse me, not history, uh, 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 what they call it, uh, scientific teaching, uh, mathematics teaching, music, and uh, literature teaching. And these essays, um, they were preliminary. There were holes in some of those essays, but the main point is they did it. And they did it for African-American and African content. And then they promised that they would then do the same thing for Native American content. They promised that they would do the same thing for Asian American content. And they've since delivered. And my argument is what the African-American intellectuals in Portland, Oregon did um, in the late 80s should have formed the basis for a, a, a radical African education. And essentially, a lot of people blew an opportunity which has been presented to them since I think 1987 or 1989 or whenever it was that the Portland model essays came out. And it wasn't just um, a situation that, yes, these were written for school teachers. They could have been adapted and put in the university curricula. Um, black educators and pedagogues all over the world should have seized that material and added to it, added to it, added to it. Because what could have happened is that could have been the basis of a radical black education back then. I'm out. Greetings. My name is Robin Walker. I'm also known as the Black History Man. I am perhaps best known for my 2006 book, When We Ruled. Based on this book, I'm launching a new online history course aimed at you, the adults. You could be a parent, you could be a teacher, a mechanic, cleaner, professionals, care workers, security guards, taxi drivers, kitchen workers, entrepreneurs, tech heads, lawyers, all of you. We want people from all over the world to be empowered by our content. We want you to gain mastery over your history and heritage. And you can do this by subscribing to our course. Click on the link to get this powerful, life-changing material. Okay. Um, you know, Joyce, you, know, you, you edited the book, Black Education, a little bit of a Bible, shall we say. But um, it was about transformative um, research and an action agenda for the new century relative to um, education um, for not just African Americans, but really Africans. So, so, so can, can, you, can you jump in on, on that for us? Well, yes. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Brother Robin, so glad to hear you refer to the baseline essays that was uh, organized uh, with the support and direction of my teacher and friend, Baba Asa Hilliard. And at that time, uh, when the Portland baseline essays came out, um, I was director of teacher education at Santa Clara University in California. And I was just, I think, beginning my service on the curriculum commission for the state of California, which um, is a state board of education commission that organizes the adoption of textbooks for California schools. And at that time, uh, we were also 
confronting the inevitable backlash when something like the Portland Baseline Essays comes out, then there is a backlash. So in the 80s and early 90s, there was a, a, a huge conflict over curriculum content in New York. <laughs> and this was the under the heading of the Curriculum of Inclusion, um, Leonard Jeffries uh, was one of the people who was involved in that, and a sister from um, uh, Ethiopia, Eleni Tedla, who wrote a beautiful book on African education. So I'm I'm using this as an example of the context that we're always operating in. When we push forward with uh, an authentic, truthful, inclusive approach. And you pointed out that the Portland baseline essays were the first, and then there was going to be something for Native Americans. I mean, that's what we've always done. We've always been leading in the effort to be inclusive. So um, then you get the horrendous attack on the Nile Valley scholars, on I mean, personal attacks to really, um, I mean, Linda Jeffries had to have uh, security uh, protection for years for 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 his involvement uh, in these these controversies. But anyway, I was on the commission, and I wanna I wanna pick up on what you said to emphasize the importance of perspective. Because what the baseline essays brought us, which which the Black intellectual tradition has always brought, is a perspective, our standpoint, how we look at the world. And um, that perspective is what was denied by the people who wanted to say, oh, they said things like we were just... Uh, one of the scholars said we were embracing filiopietism. Uh, admiration for ancestors, fake admiration for ancestors on foreign uh, lands. I mean, all kinds of justifications to deny the truthfulness of what we were bringing. So I got into the fray because I was uh, serving on the commission. And the perspective that was pre presented in the social studies textbooks at that time was flawed. Yes, there was more information about Black people and other uh, minoritized groups, but the perspective was flawed. So those textbooks presented a, a, a view of the United States as United States is a nation of immigrants. The Portland Baseline Essays did as Baba Asa always said, we do not start our story with slavery. We go back to foundation principles. And so the Saturday schools, the, the uh, ethnic studies, black studies, all of those initiatives came out of the need to consistently resist assimilationist education that would not prepare us to be ourselves, to know our own heritage, and to lead um, toward what the United States and other quote unquote democracies claim to represent. So I just want to uh, celebrate that you were involved in a Saturday school. And here in the United States, we've had not only Saturday schools, but Black independent schools. And I read recently uh, about a, a midnight school that I didn't even know about from, from enslavement days. So we're part of that tradition. And uh, it's not new, but I'll just end uh, my, my point right now to say that right now in the United States and in states like Georgia, Florida, and some others that I could name, um, we have laws that have been passed that are terrifying teachers and telling educators what words they can actually say in the classroom. And along those lines, I need to offer a disclaimer because I work for the state of Georgia. 
I have to say that I'm speaking as an individual, not as a representative of the university or the state of Georgia. And that's the legal advice I've received from um, the university's lawyers. So we're, well, I, I wrote a paper recently and the title was All Necks Are on the Line. <laughs> I, I, you know, um, uh, Joyce, it's good you, you, you brought that up in, in terms of what was happening in New York because I was a part of that with Adelaide Sanford. And as you know, G2 Wilsey, who was a strong brother there in Brooklyn, in terms of community education and right. in the community to be able to influence curriculum. And, and the teachers union was one of our, our, our biggest uh, opponents mm -hmm. and um, really knocked everything out of, out of the, the ballpark. So community education was never able to be to take off uh, because of the strength of, of the, the teachers union in New York. And as you know, um, that that deals also with voting because they have a, a big block and they can vote somebody in or vote somebody out. So so we 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 lost that round. And as you mentioned now, um, you know we are like round ten, and it looks like we're losing round ten and the, and the end of the, and, and the end of the fight in terms of DeSantis and Florida. And as you're saying, other states are are following them. There's diversity, equity, and inclusion is going out the window um, for this, I don't know, um, um, right-wing, shall we say, uh, effort um, 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 of, I'll, I'll just be outright and say white supremacy to deny an, anybody else in, you know, their, their humanity, um, whether it's Native Americans or African Americans or, or others. And um, this is a, a, extremely dangerous, and um, uh, we don't know what's going to happen, obviously, with the next <laughs> election. But whatever happens, um, you know, we as a people have to do something for ourselves, realizing the danger of the situation. And, and that it is something that has gone on for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned at, at the top. Carter G. Woodson talking about miseducation back in the 20s. You know, my dad was talking about it. Um, uh, you know, I think um, that there are so many people that have talked about that over the years and attempted to do just what you've talked about, Robin, and what you've talked about, Joyce. But here we are now where the extremists, shall we say, on the right uh, have been gaining ground. And I don't think we have gained ground. Um, um, you know, if we, we have pockets, and Joyce, um, um, we need to go back to those pockets that you have, you have mentioned, because those those pockets that are out there, somehow we need to, to bring them out, out together and, and, and uh, do something together.